Hi, welcome to History Connected. My name is Charlie. In our last video, Shadows and Storms, we explored the incredible journey of light from Alhazen's experiments with shadows in the 11th century to Newton's prisms and eventually decoding alien worlds with molten iron rain and supersonic winds. If you haven't seen that video yet, I've linked the description below. But while we touched on the creation of spectroscopy, we barely scratched the surface. There was so much more to say. Well, here's a clip from Shadows and Storms. Take a moment to imagine this. A distant world, thousands of light years away. It's locked in perpetual twilight, its surface lashed by storms of metallic rain. We know of this alien world, not because we've seen it directly, but because of the light that escapes its atmosphere and travels to us. By analyzing that light, scientists can decode the chemicals swirling in its clouds, the composition of its atmosphere, even the potential for life hidden beneath its raging skies. This ability to interpret light's language didn't spring from some high-tech lab or futuristic telescope. It began in the most humble of settings, a small dark room where a man named Al Hazen pierced a wall to let in a single ray of sunlight. The creation of spectroscopy didn't just transform astronomy. It shaped how we understand the universe, the Earth, and even ourselves. Let's start with a recap of Newton's prism experiment and see how this single experiment became the key to unlocking, well, everything. Imagine the darkened room in the 1660s. A beam of light slices through a hole in the shutters, striking a triangular piece of glass on the table. On the far wall, a vivid spectrum of colors fans out. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. To most, it's just a dazzling effect. But to Isaac Newton, it's a revelation waiting to happen. Newton didn't just see a rainbow, he saw a question. For centuries, scholars like Aristotle believed that light was altered by the objects it encountered, creating colors along the way. But Newton had his doubts. He suspected the colors were already there, hidden within the sunlight itself. For those who didn't see shadows and storms, here's a quick recap. Newton's prism experiment was a turning point in the story of light, showing that light wasn't pure. It was made up of many colors. But what if this rainbow wasn't just beautiful? What if it was a code waiting to be cracked? To test his theory, Newton let the rainbow from his first prism pass through a second one. And here's the twist. Instead of scattering further, the colors merged back into white light. The conclusion was clear. Colors weren't created by the prism. They were components of light all along. Newton described light as a huddle of colors, each with its own properties. Red light bent less than violet, he noted, because it was less refrangible. It wasn't just a pretty picture, it was proof that light could be broken down, analyzed, and understood. And here's the irony. Even Newton didn't fully grasp the implications of his discovery. He revealed that light carried layers of hidden information, but he didn't yet know what those layers could reveal. The rainbow was only the beginning. You see, Newton's prism showed us how to break light apart, but it would take sharper lenses, better tools, and a few bold thinkers along the way to discover the secrets hiding in those colors. And the first clue came from tiny, mysterious gaps in the rainbow. So, Newton cracked the rainbow. But for over a century, the world was content to admire it without asking too many questions. It wasn't until the early 19th century that someone took a closer look at sunlight's colorful display and noticed something. William Wollaston, a chemist and physicist, was that someone. In 1802, while passing sunlight through a prism, he observed the spectrum wasn't perfectly smooth. Tiny gaps interrupted the rainbow as if certain colors were missing. Wollaston, who had already discovered elements like palladium and rhodium, suspected that these gaps were clues, though he couldn't yet explain them. Then about a decade later, a Bavarian glassmaker named Joseph von Fraunhofer turned his attention to these strange gaps. 
Fraunhofer wasn't trying to solve grand scientific questions. He was trying to build better optical tools. Born into poverty, Fraunhofer's life had been a journey of perseverance. Orphaned as a teenager, he apprenticed with a glassmaker and rose to become a master of optics. Using increasingly precise instruments, including his new invention, the diffraction grating. Fraunhofer cataloged hundreds of these dark lines in his spectrum. Today, we call them Fraunhofer lines, and they were the first clue that light wasn't just a blend of colors, it carried information. But at the time, nobody had a clue what the information meant. Fraunhofer, practical as ever, focused on what his discovery could do for optics, like designing better telescopes and spectroscopes. His tools would soon become essential for unlocking the secrets of light in the decades to come. Fraunhofer lines were the breadcrumbs, they hinted that light might hold a deeper code, one that could reveal the very nature of the universe. But to crack that code, someone had to connect those lines to the elements that created them. And for that, you needed fire and a couple of flames to light the way. By the mid 19th century, Fraunhofer's mysterious dark lines in the spectrum were a known curiosity in scientific circles. They were precise, consistent, and entirely unexplained. But as is often the case in science, the answer came from an unexpected direction and involved a bit of fire. Enter Robert Bunsen, a German chemist who was already famous for his practical inventions. If his name sounds familiar, it's because of the Bunsen burner, the tool he created to produce a clean, controlled flame in the lab. But Bunsen wasn't just an inventor. He was an experimental chemist with a reputation for resilience. He once survived an explosion in his lab that left him blind in one eye, and he continued to work undeterred. Bunsen's fascination with flames led him to notice that different elements burned with unique colors. Sodium produced a bright yellow flame, potassium glowed violet, and lithium burned crimson red. But these colors were hard to distinguish with the naked eye, and Bunsen needed a way to see them more clearly. Gustav Kirchhoff, suggested that Bunsen's colorful flames could be analyzed more accurately by passing their light through a prism. The result was stunning. Instead of a blurry glow, each element produced sharp bright lines in specific parts of the spectrum. These lines were consistent and unique, like a fingerprint written in light. A breakthrough came when Kirchhoff and Bunsen compared their bright lines to Fraunhofer's dark lines in sunlight. They matched perfectly. Sodium's bright yellow emission line appeared exactly where two of Fraunhofer's dark absorption lines were. The conclusion was revolutionary. The dark lines in sunlight were caused by elements in the sun's atmosphere absorbing specific wavelengths of light. For the first time, scientists had a way to determine the chemical composition of something they couldn't touch, whether it was a flame in a lab or the sun itself. Kirchhoff and Bunsen had opened a new door Light wasn't just a phenomena, it was a message. And the same light that told us about the sun would soon reveal the secrets of stars and worlds far beyond. By the late 19th century, Kirchhoff and Bunsen's discovery had transformed light into a universal code, one that could reveal the chemical makeup of anything, from a flickering flame in a lab to a blazing sun itself. But what about the stars? For that, we turn to Christian Doppler, an Austrian physicist with a fascination for waves. In 1842, while teaching in Prague, Doppler was pondering a question about sound. Why does the pitch of a train whistle rise as it approaches and fall as it speeds away? Doppler realized that the movement of the train compressed the sound waves ahead of it and stretched those behind it, altering their frequency. He called this phenomena the Doppler effect a simple but profound insight into how waves behave. Then came the leap. Doppler wondered if sound waves behave this way, why not light waves? It was a bold idea, but at the time, light's true nature, whether it was a wave or a particle, was still hotly debated. Doppler theorized that if a star moved towards us, the light waves would compress, shifting it toward blue. If it moved away, the light would stretch, shifting towards red. At first, Doppler's idea was purely theoretical, but it was too elegant to ignore, and soon others picked up the torch. In 1848, 
French physicist Armand Faiso put Doppler's theory to the test. Faiso used a spectroscope to analyze starlight and found that spectral lines did indeed shift depending on the star's motion. The Doppler effect wasn't just about sound anymore. It had become a tool for measuring the universe. In 1868, British astronomer William Huggins used the Doppler effect to measure the velocity of stars for the first time. Suddenly, stars weren't just static points of light, they were moving, dynamic objects, part of a living, shifting cosmos. Fast forward to the 1920s. By now, spectroscopy and the Doppler effect were well-established tools in astronomy. Meet Edwin Hubble, a lawyer turned astronomer. He was working at the Mount Wilson Observatory when he pointed his 100-inch telescope at distant galaxies. Using spectroscopy, he noticed something extraordinary. The spectral lines of these galaxies were shifted dramatically toward the red. Hubble's conclusion was as bold as it was transformative. The galaxies were moving away from us, and the universe itself was expanding. This discovery, built on Doppler's humble theory, turned spectroscopy into a cosmic time machine, capable of revealing not just the compression of stars, but the very history of the universe. But as light revealed the vastness of space, it also started answering questions much closer to home. Scientists realized that the same tool used to study galaxies could uncover the secrets of molecules, atoms, and even the air we breathe. While Hubble and his colleagues were using light to map the cosmos, other scientists were busy turning spectroscopy into a tool for understanding something far smaller, matter itself. And, as is often the case, the journey from stars to molecules involved a few surprising detours. Take Francis Aston, a British chemist turned physicist, who in 1918 built a new device called the Mass Spectrometer. Aston's machine didn't rely on visible light, but instead measured how ions move through a magnetic field. By separating atoms based on their mass, he discovered something remarkable. Isotopes. Atoms of the same element with slightly different weights. This breakthrough earned him the 1922 Nobel Prize in Chemistry and revolutionized how scientists studied the atomic world. Then came laser spectroscopy in the 1960s which opened up new ways to study how molecules interact with light. Lasers, with their perfectly controlled beams, could detect the faintest chemical signatures, making them invaluable for analyzing complex mixtures. And here's where things get practical. In our last episode, we touched on spectroscopy's role in medicine, like using pulse oximetry to measure oxygen levels in the blood. But have you ever wondered how we measure something like CO2 in the atmosphere? Spectroscopy is the answer. CO2 has a unique spectral fingerprint that absorbs infrared light at specific wavelengths. Instruments like infrared gas analyzers measure how much light is absorbed to determine CO2 levels. From ground-based stations at Mauna Loa Observatory to satellites like NASA's OCO2, spectroscopy allows us to track greenhouse gases, monitor pollution, and even predict climate change. But it doesn't stop there. In manufacturing, spectroscopy ensures the quality and consistency of materials. Whether it's checking the purity of metals or analyzing complex chemical compounds, industries rely on this tool to perfect their processes and eliminate impurities. From tracking our planet's health to creating better materials, spectroscopy wasn't just a scientific breakthrough, it became an indispensable tool for modern life. And as light revealed the secrets of matter on Earth, it also helped scientists explore the most extreme and inaccessible places in the universe. Places so far away, so hostile, they seem beyond the reach of human curiosity. Spectroscopy had shown us what stars are made of and how to measure the gases shaping our planet's climate. But what about the places we can't touch? Environments so extreme or so distant, they seem beyond our reach. As it turns out, Light is just as good at solving mysteries in the most hostile corners of the universe, even under the most crushing pressures on Earth. Take black holes, for example. These cosmic monsters are so dense that not even light can escape from them. But light still can tell us what's happening around them. As matter spirals into the black hole, it heats up and emits X-rays, radiation so intense it can be studied from millions of light years away. 
Under X-ray spectroscopy, scientists have uncovered the chaotic behavior of accretion disks, where gas and dust orbit at near light speeds before plunging into the abyss. Then there's the search for life's building blocks in interstellar molecular clouds. These massive clouds of gas and dust might seem like empty voids, but spectroscopy reveals otherwise. By analyzing the faint glow of starlight passing through them, we've detected complex organic molecules, compounds like methanol and formaldehyde, the precursors of life as we know it. These discoveries suggest that the ingredients for life are scattered throughout the galaxy, waiting to take shape. And it's not just out in space. Spectroscopy is also helping scientists explore the extreme conditions deep inside planets. On Earth, researchers use high-pressure experiments to simulate the crushing forces found in planetary cores. Materials are compressed to millions of atmospheres, and then the light emissions are analyzed to understand how matter behaves under these conditions. These experiments are giving us insights into the interiors of gas giants like Jupiter, and even the Earth itself. From black holes to the building blocks of life, and from distant molecular clouds to planetary cores, spectroscopy transforms the impossible into the observable. And while spectroscopy has answered so many questions about the extreme and the distant, it also left us with the biggest question of all. What's next? What secrets are still waiting to be revealed in the language of light? So, we've come quite a way. From Newton's darkened room to swirling chaos around black holes, spectroscopy has transformed how we see the universe. It took a rainbow, and turned it into a language, a universal language, spoken by stars, molecules, and planets alike. With every discovery, the connections grow deeper. The same spectral lines that revealed helium in the sun tell us how much CO2 is in our atmosphere. The light that decoded a star's composition is the same light that helps us detect the first building blocks of life in interstellar clouds. Spectroscopy doesn't just reveal the universe, it shows us how everything, stars, planets, even ourselves, are connected. When we began this journey, I realized how much spectroscopy had been overlooked. In our last episode, we touched on the importance of spectroscopy, but it was just a glimpse. It isn't just one of science's most powerful tools, it's a bridge, helping us decode the cosmos, explore the Earth, and uncover the very molecules that make us who we are. Light and shadows have always been intertwined, Shadows give light its contrast, its meaning. There's always something casting that shadow. So the question is, are we ready for whatever is casting that shadow to step into the light?